Hey, what's going on everybody? Hope you guys are doing wonderful out there. It's Spencer Baird Mixing here today with another mixing tutorial. Now on today's tutorial, I'm gonna be talking about how do you deal with a two track beat uh, instrumental inside of a, a recording session? How do you make that blend in with the vocals? Um, how do you enhance that beat? Well, on today's tutorial, I'm gonna be explaining all that. So you guys stay tuned, we're gonna get right into it. Let's get into today's tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be on how to mix a two-track instrumental. Um, a lot of times we get a two-track beat to mix down with a, uh, a lot of vocals. And it's really hard to make the uh, instrumental work with the vocals. So we have to do some EQing. We have to do some multiband compressing. And sometimes we have to do a little bit of widening on the mix. A few little tricks here and there to make the beat sound full and um work with the vocals so let's get into it so basically on this instrumental first thing i started out with was an eq so i'm boosting 10.2 db at 52 hertz now that might sound like a lot to you but it sounds good so i rolled with it um let's hear what it sounds like let's cut off the rest of these plugins Let's hear what it sounds like without the EQ or without the uh, the low frequency. So not only does it help the low end, the sub frequencies. Uh, bring those up a little more but it honestly makes the kick punch a little bit harder too you want your kick to punch hard in trap music or just rap music in general hip-hop music um so that's what that's doing and then i'm boosting 358 hertz uh 1.7 db so not too much on that just to kind of give it a little more mid-range little you know basically kind of warm the beat up a little bit make it a little fuller um, I'm adding a, a 978, 978 hertz, excuse me, 978 hertz, um, just to kind of give it a little more power. And then I'm cutting out, since I'm adding power here, I'm cutting out uh, 1.71 kilohertz, just to kind of get rid of some of that kind of the harshness of that bell, tubular bell that's in the beat. And then I'm adding a little bit of sparkle on top and then I'm darkening the beat just a little bit on the top end just to kind of let the vocals, you know, when you start mixing vocals, you want those to be on top of the mix real, real clear and crispy sounding. All right. So let's hear it with everything on and then turn it off. All right, so you can hear how that fattens up the beat a little more. You know, it, it's it's going to sound better overall when you do, you know, make those EQ moves. Um, it helps fatten the beat up, gives it a little more bass. Um, and uh, I want to show you guys something that I did on this track. Sometimes I do it on instrumentals. Um, you can, a trick that I do, you can add a, a kick drum, like a sample kick drum, that's kind of similar to the one that that is in the track um, you want to try to get it as close as you can and you're gonna want to have to tune the kick drum to fit the track um, so basically I've went through and placed a kick drum wherever the kick hits on this instrumental so it makes the kick or it makes the kick drum or makes the beat punch a little harder because I added the kick drum in there. So I'm going to let you hear it with, with it and without it.
So basically, it just gives it that little thump, that extra little thump in there. Nothing too drastic, but just a little, you know, you know, just a subtle change in the beat. Remember, you don't, you're not trying to transform the song. You're just trying to enhance it. As a mixing engineer, we just want to enhance the song. We don't, we're not trying to transform it into something that it's not. All right. So the next thing that I did on the track was this, I used a C6 uh, multiband compressor. Let's hear what that's doing. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention real quick on this, uh, when you're uh, working with, you know, any sound in particular, but particularly on a kick drum, you want to make sure you check this button right here. Most EQs have them. It's a phase button. So you want to check the phase of your drums. Um, I might do an in-depth tutorial on that. I know there's a lot of tutorials already on the internet about this so I might not do a tutorial if you guys want to learn more about it just drop a comment uh, on this video and I'll put together a tutorial for it but you just want to check the phase to make sure everything is uh, in phase and the way you do that is you turn this not check you hit this button right here to turn it on and off and if the kick kind of disappears when you hit the button that means it's you know it it's it's out of phase if it fattens up and gets bigger, that means it's uh, most likely in phase. All right, so let's play with this. So the kick drum was already in phase, so there's nothing really I needed to do with it. I just wanted to show you guys what it would sound like if it was out of phase. Now with this button pressed in, you can hear that the beat, the kick kind of gets smaller. It doesn't sound as powerful. But when I turn it off, the kick drum gets more fatter. That's because it's in phase. All right, so let's go back to the C6 compressor, multiband compressor, and let's hear what it's doing. And what I can hear that it's doing basically is it's kind of taming those kind of like mid-range frequencies. I've turned down the volume uh, just a little bit on the, or yeah, turned down the volume on the low frequencies because I thought that it had just a tad bit too much bass. And, you know, the way I will show you guys a trick that I do to kind of check the low end. Uh, here's a song by Juicy J. Um, I, you want to pick a song that's kind of similar to the song that you're mixing. And I picked this one cause I thought it kind of sounds similar. Um, so let's play this and I'm using the C4 compressor, multiband compressor, and I got the low end soloed on this. So all I'm hearing is the low frequencies. So let's check this out. On your head, you worth a stack or two real nigga. So basically, I'm just using this C4 to kind of solo out the low frequency sub uh, frequencies to hear what they did on the mix and, you know, just to compare it to mine and see how mine compares. So let's compare both of them and see see how they match up uh, with one another. So let's mute that. Let's go back to here. And I have the C4 on the master fader. Let's turn that on. All right, and then real quickly, let's go back to the Juicy J track, solo it, and do this. All right, let's go back here. All right, so 
you know, you can hear that they both sound pretty similar. Um, maybe on the Juicy J record, it's uh, it seems like there's a little bit less. Maybe of the bass, it's, it seems like it's a little bit louder. But for this track, I wanted it to be just a little bit lower. That way, you know, I'm not worrying about those frequencies coming through when I'm when I get ready to master the track. But basically, that's just a trick you can use to match up the low end. And then also just to check the overall mix of the whole song and make sure you're competing loudness wise with with the major records out there. You want to make sure that when you're, you know, if you're mastering the song, if not, I guess you don't really worry about it too much. But you can because these songs are already mastered. So if you're mastering your own music, you want to check with commercial songs. You want to pick your favorite artist or a song that is similar to what you're mixing and check the volumes and make sure you are competing with them. Because the minute you you don't do that and you send it off to an artist, they're going to compare their songs to other major records. And if it doesn't sound loud enough, they're going to assume that the mix doesn't sound good enough. All right. So moving on, the last plugin that I have on this instrumental is the Brainworks plugin. I love this plugin. It is amazing. Um, if you guys don't have it, you need to go get it. Um, what I use it for is a lot of times to widen, widen it up like a mix or widening up uh, instrumental or whatever I want to use, whatever I want to widen up. So basically I'll show you what I did with it. So let's play it. Go and buy them all. I work for every penny. How bad I go and for go and Okay. So what I did with this was I widen, widening up the, the instrumental so you go to the stereo width right here and I'll put it on 100 right now so you can see what it's doing so I'll solo the beat and let's see so as you can hear man that thing works great it's amazing uh, this is a real, real, real good tool to widen up your mix. Um, you could use a S1 imager. Or there's a lot of different image plugins out there. But for some reason, this stereo width plugin I love, or I, I like this uh, Brainworks uh, feature that's built into this mid-side uh, EQ. Um, next on this, I'm using the uh, mono section of this plugin which is really cool. You can just EQ what is in the center of the mix, which is really dope, really amazing. So let's hear what I'm doing with this. So I'm basically just cutting out around... Uh, 8.7 kilohertz just some of that high crispy sound in the beat remember you want to leave room for the vocals to sit on top so i'm just cutting out a little bit of those hi-hats a little bit of that top end up there and then on the next eq let's see so basically that little synth or that string sound that's playing throughout the beat it's kind of kind of, i felt like it was kind of in the way so i just wanted to cut that out just a little bit so you can so i can leave room and energy for the vocals to sit in there and remember this is just affecting the middle of the mix not the stereo image you could actually eq the uh the stereo parts of the song with this plugin which is really cool too <laughs> 